Hello there, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be getting ready together and my goal and theme for this video today is nothing new from the drugstore. <laughs> I've been seeing so many new from the drugstore or just new makeup videos in general. And as most of you know, I have been on a makeup buying fast for the whole month of January. So I thought one more week to stay strong. So what better way to kind of round out the month, but to go back into my collection and dig out a bunch of drugstore products that many of them I have not used in quite some time. So I hope that you will enjoy this. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and now let's go ahead and get started. So the first product I'm gonna use is the Milani eyeshadow primer. I'm just gonna put this all over my lids. Okay, while that sets, I'm gonna put some balm, lip balm on my lips. This is the e.l.f. Ride or Die Lip Balm. I keep this in my drawer, but honestly, I forget to use it. It's one that you have to use your fingers for, so that's why I don't like to take it along with me in my purse. Um, but let's just put this on. This one is the shade, I don't know. <laughs> shade is this? Oh, Tough Cookie. Okay, there we go. Those do feel so good, and they initially look like they're going to have a lot of color, but kind of shears out as it sits on the lips, but I'm going to let that sit and sink in on the lips, and now I think I'm going to go right into the eyeshadow. So I pulled out a palette that I have used before, but I just have really wanted to dig in and do another look with, and I've had requests to do some more looks with this palette. So this is the LA Girl Pro Mastery Eyeshadow Palette. This is so good. I am just continue to be impressed with this palette. So I'm gonna start off first with this shade. I'm pretty pale, so I think that's the best shade for my brow bone highlight. I'm using the Sigma E50. For today's look, I kind of have an idea of a peachy toned eye look with a little bit of plum because I'm wearing plum and I love the pairing of plum and peach together. And I'm kind of, it's been cold here in wintery and it just kind of am feeling a little bit of kind of that brighter, fresher kind of look. So anyway, we'll see where we end up. But I'm gonna go in with a little bit of this shade right here. Let's just see. I can't remember how peachy or pink this one is. Um, I think that's about perfect. So I'm going to use the Morphe M504. I should put this all through the crease and build that up a little bit here. All right, now I want to go in with the deepest shade of the look. So I'm going to go in with this far corner shade and this one is called Dapper. And I'm going to take the BK Beauty 204 brush and just kind of look ahead, create just a little bit of a lift here in the outer corner, going up towards the brow. And then I'll just kind of feather that in towards the center. So you can see these are, these are pigmented, but they're very buildable. So I do like that about these shadows. They're a little bit on the softer side, but they don't like completely blend away to nothing. So that's always a good thing. And then I'm going to go in with the BK Beauty 206 and a little bit of that shade and the one above it. The one above it's called Maven. And that one definitely has a lot of plum in it. Ooh, very pigmented. So I'm just going to really, I really am trying to keep this concentrated to the outer corner here. I just need to build a little depth through the crease there. And then I'm gonna go back with that first shade we used in the crease. What is that called? That is called Conquer. And I'm going to use that just to kind of bring back a little bit of those peachy tones there. 
Then I'll go back to my E50 and a little bit first of this brow bone highlight shade. Just going to put this right above just to make sure we don't lose that brightness. And then I'm going to use a little bit of this darker kind of matte shade. It's called Skills. And I'm going to use that right here just to kind of even out the edge there just a little bit. Okay, so now it's time to brighten things up with our lid shade. And I've been thinking about this. I think I'm gonna start off with this shade right here, which is Profesh. And I'm gonna just use my finger first and apply that to the lid. Just kind of see what our color, main color looks like. So this has a little bit of pink, a little bit of some peach. Now let's see here. Let's just add a little more. All right. And then I think I want to add a little bit of this shade right here. And I'm just going to tap that over that shade. Oh yeah. Those two combined make a really nice kind of peachy, almost peachy rosy gold shade. And then right here in the outer corner where this darkness kind of meets that brighter lid shade, I'm going to go in with a little bit of this shade right here. So pretty. And I'm just going to tap a little bit of this right here. And just kind of feather it towards the center a little bit. That's really pretty. I'll take the BKB D206 just through the crease, blend kind of the edge of those shimmer shades. And then let's just add a little setting spray and just kind of smooth that out. The only drugstore setting spray that I could find is the Morphe setting spray. Continuous setting mist is what it's called. So um, I wasn't sure this is going to work, but I think it does. So let's just pat that brush. So I didn't add any extra shadow. I'm just using that damp brush to kind of pat over that area. And you can see it just makes it a little smoother. It's a little more of a metallic finish rather than glittery finish, but I really like it. And then while it's still damp, I'm going to just press a little more of this kind of lighter peachier shade just right on top there. For eyeliner, I'm going to use this one from NYX. I haven't used this in a, quite a while. It is the Faux Blacks and it's Burnt Sienna. So I just want to see how this looks. It's a really deep kind of aubergine shade. Really pretty. And these do set and stay really well. I think I like that shade as opposed to your traditional black or brown. Just leaves that little hint of purple. I'm going to take a little bit of that on the lower lash line here as well. And then I'm sure you know what brush is coming next, the M432 from Morphe. And let's take a little bit of this shade. So we won't go quite in with the darkest shade. So we're gonna go in with, what is that, Maven? And just tap that over the top of that shade. Help set the pencil and just soften the edge of it a little bit. And then I'll take a little bit of this peachy shade kind of in the middle of the lower lash line. And then a little more of Maven, kind of blend those two together. You can see that really brought out the green in my eyes. All right, now we definitely need to clean up. So I'm just using a little bit of almond oil. I have it in my fancy little bottle here. <laughs> 
All right, I'm gonna show you a trick that I've been doing with another setting spray, but I wanna try it with this Morphe one. So I'm taking a clean E60 and I'm going to just spray a little bit of this on the back of my hand, dampen that brush, and I'm going to just press this under my eyes. I don't have any concealer on yet, obviously. <laughs> All right, and I'm going to just tap this all over that area and I'm kind of tapping and pressing it into the areas where I have lines. Right. We're gonna let that sit and apply some foundation. My favorite foundation from the drugstore is still, I think the Catrice HD, but I've used this a number of times. So I went digging through my stash and decided it's time to pull out the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless. Now this might be a little dark, so I also have on standby the LA Girl Pro Foundation Mixing Pigment in White. That's a great thing to have on hand if you're like me and you do sunless tanning. So your summertime foundation shades are different. It's nice to be able to change them by just adding a little brightness. So I think I am going to add a little bit of this to that foundation. The shade I have in the Maybelline foundation is 128 Warm Nude. All right, let's see. Yeah, that's probably better. So I just did a little tiny dollop of that mixing medium. All right, now for a brush. I'm going to use this one from Morphe. This is the M439. Huge brush, covers a lot of area quickly. And I'm going to just try and do a light layer of it. Okay, I'm going to let that foundation sink into the skin a little bit. It's nice and it's evened out the tone. Got a little bit of texture, but we'll let it sink in. And in the meantime, we got to cover up these dark circles. I have two from the drugstore I haven't used in a while. This one is the Neutrogena Radiant Cream Concealer in the shade Bisque. And then my old standby is the Revlon Candid Photo Ready Concealer. And this is the shade 015 Light. So I'm going to try just a little bit of the Neutrogena. Just see if we can get our perfect shade here. I know that looks like a lot, but it's really not. I'm just spreading it out. This is a nice soft formula for sure. Put a little bit there in my dark spot. All right, and then let's just blend that out and see. We might not have to use our Revlon one. All right, so I'm using this Real Techniques brush just to kind of further spread that concealer. All right, I think I want just a little more coverage right here on this darkness. So I'm gonna go in with the Revlon Candid Concealer. And this one has a little more yellow tones in it. I'm gonna just highlight a little bit here in the center of the face, bring a little more brightness here. To set the under eye, I pulled out the e.l.f. HD powder, and this used to be my standby for setting the under eyes, and I haven't used this in quite a while. This is the translucent shade, but it looks very white. So I'm gonna use the Sedona Lace 313 brush and really tap off my brush here and just very lightly apply a layer of that under the eyes. It is a very nice, soft, lightweight powder. And then to set the rest of the face, I pulled out my Maybelline Fit Me powder I figured it probably pairs pretty well with the Fit Me foundation, right? This is the shade Fair Light 10. I'm gonna go ahead and use a powder puff. I like to do this if I feel like I need to kind of hide some texture, which I feel like I've got some texture showing from that foundation. So let's just press some powder in. What a difference powder can make. 
All right, now we need to add a little color and a few spots back to the face. All right, I pulled out three of my drugstore bronzers. You know I love this one from Physician's Formula. I think I'm gonna use this as my bronzer and then use one of these as my contour. I think actually this one is probably a better contour shade. So this is the Milani Sun Kissed. It's the Silky Matte Bronzing Powder, but it is a much cooler tone. To me, it reminds me a lot of the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronzer. I'm just saying, kinda does. I'm gonna use the F05 from Sigma. Give myself, sound like I'm from the South there. Give myself some cheekbones here. And then I'll work this along the hairline and the jawline. That is a very nice, soft formula. It's very buildable. So if you're new to contouring or bronzing, this is a good one because you're not going to get too much product too quickly. I'm going to go in with my nose contour here. And now let's further bronze the face with a little bit of Physician's Formula. This is their newer packaging, but it's the same product. So I'm using the Sedona Lace 919 brush. And I'm going to use this now on the tops of the cheeks. And there's kind of a little more where the sun might hit, you know, <laughs> summertime and we were all out in the sun. See, I'm looking at my table and I forgot I had pulled out several cream products, a couple of cream blushes, cream highlighter. Oh, well, I'll have to use this in another video. All right, moving on. How about this blush? I have not used this blush in ages. This is Milani's Luminoso. It's a very popular blush. And I just feel like I've never really gotten into this shade. I need to use it when I'm a little paler and apparently I just forget. So I'm going to use the BK Beauty 104 and apply this on my cheeks. Ooh, that's pretty. It is a very peachy tone. I think I always try to pull it out in the summer and it just didn't seem like it had enough pigment or something for me then, but I'm liking it today. Very buildable and it does have a glow, but I don't feel like it's highlighting texture too much. Speaking of glow, Let's see here. I pulled out a couple of highlighters. I have this one in the e.l.f. Blush Duos. Who remembers these? I mean, it wasn't that long ago, right? <laughs> but it feels like it in the makeup world. There have been so many launches since then. Um, I'm feeling like these are all just a little too dark for me right now. So I'll just go with my favorite from the drugstore, which is the Maybelline. I've used this a lot. I also love the Milani one as well. I'm going to use the MAC 140 fan brush. Just put this lightly on the cheeks here. Cheeks are definitely glowing now. <laughs> All right, and then before I put that away, I'm actually going to use my pinky and put a little bit, ooh, or a lot, on the inner corner here. I'll use this Sigma E30 to blend and apply just a little more of that on the inner corner and just kind of spread it towards the lid shades a little bit there. Blend it in nice and bright. All right, now we really need to put something through our brows to really frame our eye work. So if you haven't done your brows yet and you're kind of looking at your finished look going, oh, something's off, do your brows and it'll bring it together. Um, I've been debating on these two. I think I'm going to go back to the Milani. I've gone through a whole one of these. This is my second one. This is the Milani Precision Brow. So this is probably newer. I don't know. Maybe it came out midpoint last year. I have the shade 120 Caramel. And surprisingly, I don't find it to be too warm. But I like this shade when I'm a little more on the blonde side of things with my hair color. And then I'll set the 
those brows with a little bit of the NYX Control Freak Brow Gel. This is just clear. It's been a while since I've used this. It has actually pretty good hold. I would say it's maybe a seven on a scale from one to 10 of hold power, but it is pretty good. And I just like how it adds a little texture through the brows. Nothing real crazy. I know there's some pretty feathery brows in right now, but it's not really a look I can achieve with no brows. <laughs> no, my brows actually aren't doing too bad. I do have a brow video coming up, an updated brow routine and everything. So stay tuned for that. All right. For our mascara, I went through my drawers. I even went through just some backup mascaras. I almost always have a backup of the L'Oreal Lash Paradise, but I don't, not in the regular formula. However, I still had the Lash Paradise in the waterproof formula. So as much as I don't like waterproof, I figured I might as well use it up, right? So I'm gonna start off first by curling my lashes. and then using the L'Oreal Voluminous Primer, and then I will follow it with the waterproof version of Lash Paradise on the upper lashes. And then for lower lashes, I do almost always keep, try and keep this on hand. This is the L'Oreal Double Extend Tubing Mascara. I could use this on the upper lashes, but I don't feel like this gives enough volume to my liking, but it is fantastic on the bottom lashes because it doesn't flake and smudge on me. up with some lip color. I'm going to start off with the e.l.f. Putty Eye Primer and I forget what shade I have, cream. And this is similar. It's a little drier than the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot, but hey, I'm trying to stay with drugstores. So I'm going to use this around the edge of the lips. And part of the reason why I do this is I have such uneven lip lines that this helps kind of conceal that, but it also helps hold the lip liner, lipstick, whatever in place better. This one's not quite as good as the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot, but it still helps. All right, you can tell this has been well used, but it's been a while. This is the L'Oreal Color Riche Lip Liner in Matte Stir Mind. It's hard to say. And then for lip color, I pulled this out. I forgot I had this shade. These are the Burt's Bees Lip Shimmers. These are really amazing products. These have been around forever, but they've come out with new shades. This is the shade Apricot, and these feel so good. They have that uh, peppermint tingle. They smell like peppermint, and this shade, I just thought, hey, it is a nice peachy tone and I think it's going to work nicely. I am gonna to top it with something else, but we'll start here. I mean, look how much color you get from that. These are very moisturizing. I am going to top it with a little bit of this. These are the Alme Lip Vibes lipsticks. They're in that cardboard packaging. And this shade, Skip the Gym, can I get an amen? <laughs> This is such a pretty shade and I just forget all about it. Look how pretty that is. All right, I'm going to top off the excess of the Burt's Bees just because I don't want it to get too goopy here. All right, so here's our finished look. 
And while we do have that little bit of depth on the outer corner, I love that kind of peachy color on the lid and the peachy lip. I think it keeps it just nice and fresh looking, even though we're still in the tail end of January and many of you are in the throes of winter right now. Hopefully this just kind of brought a little brightness and a little bit of freshness and life to winter days for you. So I hope that you enjoyed this. I am now off to go do exciting things like grocery shopping and maybe run through Hobby Lobby and check out a few things there too. So I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.